أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, Viewers, I greet you all with the universal gifts of Islam and that is Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh And those of you who don't, uh, who are not Muslims, I, uh, I greet you also again uh, and I wish you the best of guidance uh, that Allah should guide you into this way of life uh, Today I'm going to be dealing with an aspect of the Quran that otherwise people don't seem to understand especially those who call themselves the Orientalists Orientalists are people who specialize on hating the Quran, specialize on writing information that is not consistent with our religion. And so therefore, uh, God Almighty, he knows that there's going to be people like that who would uh, uh, say stuff like that about the Quran. And so from the very inception, Allah said, Kul la inni tamatul insu wal jinn. Allah and ya atu bimisili khazal Quran, la ya atuna bimisilihi walau kana ba'adu hum liba alin zahira. Tell them, O Muhammad, if the whole of mankind and jinn were to come with a book like the Quran, they would not be able to do it, even if they support themselves from any angle. And this information is in the Quran over 1,400 years ago. That means mankind have not reached that level of thinking, have not reached that deep thinking, you know, position or time to be able to write a book like the Quran. Because whosoever made those statements have to have, you know, uh, an infinite knowledge. And so therefore, the Quran remains to be what it is today. Uh, you can't doubt the Quran. Why would you doubt the Quran when over 1.8 billion souls follow this Quran? Why would you write the, uh, doubt the Quran when the book was given to us over 1,400 years ago in the desert? The Quran is a book that balances the equilibrium of the life on earth. It is a summation, a constitution, a future world constitution to govern the life in this dunya or in this world till the end of time. And all the information that we need to sojourn on earth have been given by God Almighty in the Quran. The seal of prophethood came when Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam left the earth. It is a book of guidance. It guides everything. It takes mankind from the day he was born till the end of time. You can't corrupt the Quran. Many books were written, being corrupted. Many religious books have been revised, re-revised. New things have been added, certain things have been taken out. We have different books of many, many, many different religions. But you can't do that with the Quran. Why? Because Allah has made it such that those in the very inception, people have memorized the Quran. Over millions and millions of souls have memorized the Quran. So the moment you write something about the Quran that is not in the Quran, it can be easily seen and we can you know, get you out as a corruption. And number two, the Quran is a standing miracle. A miracle is an act beyond the physical law of nature. A miracle is an act that cannot be copied or cannot be instituted again to replicate the new one that has been brought forth. And so the Quran still remains the way it is. The only book of religion that remains as a test of time cannot be copied. It cannot be corrupted. Over 40 men wrote different books from the other religion. To give you an example, the Bible was written uh, from about 40 different uh, authors. And the Quran is just one single author. And that author is the Quran through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Quran gives us a bedrock, a standard position in that any book that comes will fall apart. Any book that comes close to the Quran in terms of purity, in terms of uh, worship, in terms of uh, governing, in terms of social aspect, in terms of dealings with people from different world, its international linguistic meaning that override each and every time. It is a book written over 1,400 years ago, yet it is not obsolete compared to other books that came before the Quran. Many, many messengers have passed the earth. Their miracle cannot be repeated. Moses' miracle cannot be repeated. You can't take a stick, go and hit on the water and let it divide, divide like Moses did. You can't do that. And you can't... Uh, 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 have someone that is dead to um, pronounce certain words to bring him back to life. You can't do that. But we believe those things happened at the time that it happened, at the time of the previous prophet 
The Quran is the only book that you can see. This is the book of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We don't have the Torah of of, of Musa alaihi salam. It is missing. You ask the Jew, they can't bring the Quran back again. The Christian don't have the Injil of Isa ibn Maryam, the good news, the Evangel, the gospel. It is not there. It's only the Quran that is there. And people have memorized the Quran. You don't have volume one of the Quran, volume two of the Quran. So the Quran stand the test of time. It is an extant book. And intellectuals who specialize on thinking, rationalizing, and processing information have come to conclusion that uh, the only book that stands the test of time is the Quran. And they have making certain aspect of uh, miracle found in the Quran could not have been, you know, known at the time that it was revealed. And you can't say Muhammad from his own figment of imagination in the 7th century uh, wrote this information that is consistent with modern science. That also put the Quran on the level beyond any human being. An intellectual by the name of Maurice Bukai, after he converted to Islam, he wrote a book, The Quran, The Bible and Science. And in that book, Maurice Bukai said, the Quran have presented a genuine challenge to mankind, leaving only one alternative. And that alternative is no one will be able to write a book like the Quran because information found in the Quran is not there at the time that the Quran was revealed. It is a modern information. That means the Quran is for yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And there is one intellectual by the name Professor Annie Beats. She said, uh, for any person to write the Quran, that person has to have an encyclopedic mind, meaning all discipline of information have to be in the Quran. So where and how could Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the desert be able to know this aspect of science in the Quran known only today through painstaking research and sending balloon and satellite in the atmosphere and stratosphere to bring information? How could that be? That is not possible. Uh, Albert Einstein, in his write-ups, Summa Mathematica, at the end of time, he said, we have found the quantum that makes it possible that we know today that the world could not exist by its own, by its own self. There's got to be a man behind the Quran because everything fits in the Quran like a jigsaw puzzle, meaning somebody have to create the world. And that is exactly what the Quran have said. Everything is being balanced and that men of knowledge will come to eventually believe that the Quran was given by Allah for the whole of mankind. So Allah said, وَيَرَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا لِئِلِمْ أَلَّذِي أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ هُوَ الْحَقِّ وَيَحَدِي إِلَى سِرَى الْعَزِزِ الْحَمِيدِ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكِرٌ لِلْعَالَمِينَ وَلَتَعَلَمُنَّا نَبَأَهُ بَدَهِينَ those who have the knowledge, they will come to know that you, Muhammad, came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that you are on the right track. And the Quran is for the whole of mankind. But as time goes on, mankind will come to understand the implication of the fact that the Quran came from God Almighty. And today, over 1,439 years ago, when the Quran came to town, yet it is a force to reckon with. So the Orientalists are judging the Quran based upon the way they are thinking. The way human beings write the Quran, it is not the way the Quran was uh, uh, written. People begin to write their own book. If you look at the Old Testament, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form, and the Lord said in the first day. So it tells you in the beginning, it's like a once upon a time syndrome. Look at the, uh, the, the New Testament, it's uh, from the book of Matthew. The very beginning of the New Testament. Uh, this is the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And Abraham begot Isaac, and Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Zari and Fari. It is telling you this is the genealogy. In other words, once upon a time. And then it mentioned the parents where Jesus lived, who his mother was. The Quran is not a book like that. It is written from the power of of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why Allah said no human being will be able to write the book like the Quran. If Muhammad wrote the Quran, definitely he would have mentioned his mother's name, his father's name, the four companions. Their name is not in the Quran. Aisha, his wife, beloved, not in the Quran. Khadija al kubra not in the Quran. Fatima, not in the Quran. This is a book unlike any other books. The beginning of the Quran is not chapter one. And the end of the Quran is not chapter of the end. It is mixed in between. So it is a book. Each and every word that Allah has given in the Quran is meticulously chosen, carved out, and placed in a particular verse to fit in the whole you know, uh, material substance it makes of the Quran. The Quran is unlike human being. It doesn't have Muhammad's biography. It is a complete way of life.
It is a conglomeratum of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's uh, uh, revelation. And it is the book that will withstand the end of time. So those who don't understand the Quran, they should go back in time to read the signs of the Quran, which speaks about uh, Asbabu Nuzul of Quran. You know, causes that make certain verse of the Quran to be revealed and to cure the situation of the time that it was revealed. Definitely the Quran cannot be written by any human being. A man who has never gone to school, no education. Okay, let's believe the enemy. Let's just agree with the enemy that Muhammad somehow went to University of Medina for 10 years, over seven, over 1,400 years ago. Let's agree. Let's agree he went to school. Okay, at the time that he went to school, the information still is not consistent with today's knowledge. Who gave him that information? Who gave him that information that is consistent with modernity? Absolutely, it is God Almighty. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Those whom the book was given before you, O Muhammad, they know the Quran and they know you very well like they know their own self because the information in the Quran is packed mentioned in the previous books that came before the Quran. This is to elucidate, to intensify, to explain and to cajole and to sort of bring, you know, a harmony within the core of the human endeavor in this world until he meet his lot. That is the Quran. That is the legacy of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.